Hello, and welcome to Dystopia, a city that may only have a few buildings, but it represents all of the buildings that would exist in a dystopian society. So yeah, let's go through it. So how about we start with what is a dystopian society? A dystopian society is a society that has too much government control, to put it simply. Now, the main way that we can see how a dystopian society would work is by exploring the ideas of abusive governments and censorship in books and literature. Many examples of dystopian societies lie in the classic books The Hunger Games, Lord of the Flies, and Fahrenheit 451. All of these stories have an aspect of dystopian society by exploring different ways that, they, that it can be practiced. First, with The Hunger Games, we see a world where the government uses its power to control where people live and what work field they are in by forcing them to live in certain areas that acclimate to those jobs. Now, the main way that these districts can see behind the scenes is through a thing called The Hunger Games, which is a brutal fight to the death from a few representatives of all the districts that are kids. And that is how we can learn about dystopian society from that angle. Next, in Lord of the Flies, we are thrown into a world where a few kids have gotten into a plane crash and immediately developed a small government that is very much like a, de a democratic government. At first, the representatives were elected. These kids create an environment that is mainly job-oriented, and people are assigned roles based on body types and knowledge on basic survival skills. Now, later in the story, we learn that some of the older boys want to dispose of some of the younger boys because they aren't contributing to the team. This results in one older gentleman who disagreed with the group being pushed off a cliff because the boy knew too much and was going to warn the younger children. And finally, Fahrenheit 451, a world that focuses over a man that feels like his life is perfect until a young girl talks with him with knowledge on the way that things used to be. This leaves the man uncomfortable and as slowly everyone betrays him, he feels lost and alone and drives to madness. So all of these different interpretations of this idea shows how these authors would think that a government can really do. And those are just a few examples. Now, let's get into have past dystopian societies ever existed. In my opinion, it depends on the way that you look about it. Nazi Germany was a real life dystopian society. Let me explain. The government was run by a dictator that made sure that all people believed in a certain religion and had large punishments towards people that tried to practice other religions. This sounds a lot like our stories that we've heard recently, just about a different idea. A person who is leading a large government of some kind, that has some influence on people, withholds the truth from people in the country, disposes those who disagree with him, and it checks all the items off of my personal checklist of these fictional dystopian societies. Now, let's get into some of the buildings. We are going to start with the Capitol building. Now, this Capitol building is not furnished from the inside because I feel like the furnishings on the inside would be the same as, you know, any other Capitol building, except for just a lot more branding and a lot more security than our normal Capitol building here today. Now, I did make it like almost a reverse of the White House, a dark house, if you will, because it almost feels... It should feel dead. It should feel like everyone is under the influence of this society. And so that's why it feels so dark and dismal at this government area. No one should feel excited to be forced to come here. Now, over here, we have a simple office building. So let's get into it, shall we? This office building mainly is much more bright, but doesn't have much color. Now that is going to be important in a bit. The reason why that there's no color and almost feels blank throughout most of the entire city is that the colors of this dystopian society, I decided, was a red and black and some with a hint of purple every once in a while. Now, if a building didn't like that color scheme of any kind they were either forced to continue with that color scheme no matter what or do a solid white so this would be a building that wanted didn't want to be special necessarily but definitely wanted a to be stepped outside the crowd for marketing purposes so this is the um we 
keep going through these buildings and you'll notice that there's these people in these red suits. Anyone in a red suit is signifying any kind of security or government official or officer. Now, these people are overseeing those who are um, working at their cubicles and um, probably there would be like much bigger rooms and so there would be much more guards. I was thinking about like maybe one guard per six people would be in these buildings because they just want to make sure that no one is conspiring against them. Now in the office space, in the main manager office space, there are no guards because um, the manager's office space is private and definitely company confidential. Now, we did whiz past a room, which, here, let me go back here. Okay, so yeah, this is the shipping room where all of the stuff at this postal area would get shipped, but it has to go through two guards in order to be shipped through fully. So that is some censorship government control. Now we're going to turn our attention over to the park and construction site. The reason I'm putting these two together is the park is kind of the glimmer of hope that we have here. And then over here, there's a little tear in the um, construction site, like, wall. And if you go through a certain area in the construction site, you're able to get to the secret tunnel that leads underground and then you find this room where there's people. This is a rebel base. This is rebel base A as labeled here. And then we also have a little um, a little plan over here. And so we have a little bit of a storyline going on. So we have like breach the Capitol building, breach the police station, breach the prison, and then do a couple of things like locate. I don't. I'm not currently looking at the world right now as I'm saying this voiceover, but I'm pretty sure it's like Logan something, Logan Jackson or something. But um, there is an armory, a little bit of an armory, and then a reception desk for those who find this building to check in and see their opinions. Because, I mean, sometimes the government want the rebellion would have to stoop to the government's level and... If they do a background check on a civilian that wanders into here and doesn't like it, then they might have to also dispose of them because they might rat them out to the government that they exist. And so there's a presumed base B somewhere. Um, it's not actually built, but yeah, there's an armory. with It appears someone gearing up of some kind and also a person going through some storage. So I'm just extra storage somewhere, maybe weapons, ammunitions, things like that. So yeah, that's the rebel base and construction area. Now, I did build this restaurant over here, and it has a couple of civilians inside of it, but mainly the fact that I wanted to point out here is that there's security here at this restaurant. There's security in every place. I do want to also quickly mention that anyone that was wearing a blue uniform is also technically a police officer. It's just, I I really went ham on the armor stands. And so I'm not able to actually um, change the armor stands without like destroying them and then putting them back. But so any of them wearing a blue uniform as well, so you saw some of those at the Capitol building, are also official officers. Now, the fact that there's also official officers in the restaurant and not that many like actual people here is also alarming. Now, this one was actually one of my favorite things to build. This is the prison. I know we're kind of like going in a weird order here, but I'm currently doing these voiceovers just based off memory here. So this is the prison. Um, it is very much similar to the prison in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And so, um, in the sense that there's a lot of guards, but they're, the guards don't really care what happens to the prisoners as long as they don't get out. So, as you can see somewhere in here, I'm not really sure where, I might highlight it somewhere in this, like, walkthrough here, that, um, there's these two prisoners fighting. 
while a guard is right in front of them just staring blankly, watching this fight happen. But the guard just doesn't care as long as neither of them escape the prison. And so there's just like an overabundance of security here, making sure that nothing terrible is happening, no one's conspiring at all. And you'll notice that there are guards everywhere, and this is a very open space. This is one example of a small prison that is already being packed full. This um, prison has a capacity of 36 prisoners. But there, you can count if you want. I'm pretty sure there's 42 little mannequins here to represent the prisoners. Just as an overabundance of people. Now, you can also see that the um, cafeteria area seems very small and short-staffed for the amount of people at the prison. And that is mainly because, again, no, the government doesn't really care what happens to the workers in this prison. As long as the prisoners themselves don't escape because they're like rebellion leaders and things like that that would conspire against the government. So yeah, overabundance of security and overcapacity. That is the main thing that would be in a dystopian society prison. Now if we turn our attention to the police station, we actually have two separate buildings. So our first building is your generic police station that we have nowadays with um, a two guard receptionist, um, plenty of guards in the buildings. We have an interrogation room and I don't, I don't actually know what this room is called. The room where it, like, checks your height, like, how tall you are, and, like, you show, and you show the little placard and takes a picture of you. Um, so, yeah, there's a couple of those. Um, I was gonna add more guards, but I actually hit the armor stand limit, <laughs> so I wasn't able to add many more guards here. But, um, also in here, I think, yeah, is the armory. And so that is that. Um, yeah, so this is the generic police station. And then if we come over to this building. Okay, yeah, this building. We, this is the police report station. So instead of having like an off-site building for like 911 calls, every call would go through this building through, like, very official people that the government trusts and knows won't betray the government and can deny help to people. That is the main thing here. If they can tell that it's a re rebel, like, running away from the police and they don't know what to do other than call the police and hope that there's a good person on the other line, they can just deny the call from going anywhere and just erase it from the records, you know? Just really withhold that information from anyone. Some police officers in there may not even want to be police officers and may even want to be with the rebellion, just doesn't know any information because the phone doesn't go to them. They don't get to know anything unless the government wants them to. Overall, this dystopian society reflects how this world would be dismal. It would be very controlled in a way that is definitely violating some basic human freedoms and keeping people from doing certain things that we get to do today. We get to have a news station that tell that we know will tell the stories that we that they just want to tell. Whereas in this world, I didn't actually make a news station, but I probably should have. A news station would only tell the stories that the government deemed okay to tell. So if, and if a news reporter knew too much, even if the news reporter didn't actually broadcast the story of some kind of murder that happened because of the government, then the government would probably either send them to prison or kill them. Like, yeah, some things that they would just, like, death penalty would just happen so much more often 
and putting people in prison for petty crimes, but like for a lifetime. And there would just be so much censorship in a dystopian society and, and probably our near future. So I just hope that there's no dystopian societies like this in the future, shall we?
Thank you.